Welcome, everybody, to the Creature Cast, the official Console Creatures podcast. My name is David Petrangelo, and I'm here to talk about all things video games, including the elephant in the room this week, which is the most recent Nintendo Direct. We will get to that in just a moment. But this week, uh, we got a duo. It's just myself and Mr. Steve Vigari. Steve, how are you, man? I'm doing really good. How are you? I'm okay. I'm okay. A little uh, midweek, uh, late Wednesday madness with the Nintendo oh Direct. God. Right. There's yeah. A lot of fun stuff to talk about. Uh, it was that it was the, <laughs> the the outage of Twitter at the very same time. What fun! Oh, right. So much fun. <laughs> See, oh, oh, the Twitter saga continues, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, absolutely. And, and I'm sure a lot of people can relate to this, but um, you know, I, I tried to put out like a tweet like five minutes before it started right. and everything, and I got the the error. It was like you've hit your uh, daily limit for tweets and everything. I was like. Hold up! Is Elon Musk trying to just shadow ban me for <laughs> for just like the the dumb tweets I've done today and everything? And then I thought I I kept refreshing the page and everything, and it was very silent. I was like, okay, I don't think this is just an exclusively like yeah. thing, um, because you never know. You, you, uh, to be honest, at like, this you point, you have you never know. <laughs> yeah, the amount of shit I talk about him, like I wouldn't put it past him. Just like the fact that maybe he's so petty that you know. He's like, okay, I get this guy. I don't know. So it it, <laughs> it could happen, man. It Honestly, could happen. I, I would uh, exactly. <laughs> hey, now we got now we got tweets with four thousand characters. All is good. I oh, guess. it's all settled. Everything's solved, guys. Everything, everything, guys and gals. Everything is solved online because you yep. can do. You can basically write an entire blog post from two thousand and two on your Twitter timeline. So we're all good. Amazing. We got it. Yeah. Um, but uh, until uh, Twitter decides to. Uh, uh, I don't know if it's ever going to get back to the way it was. I think we're past that, but we're not here to talk about Twitter. Let's talk about games. Let's talk about games, Steve. Um, let, we're going to swap back and forth. I'm going to talk about something. I'm going to tell you okay, a little cool. story, and then we're going to talk oh. about your game, and then we're going to go back again. So the I reason why I want to yeah. start, yeah, I want to start with a story is because uh, a couple of weeks ago when I wasn't able to make it on the show, um, I had a series of games that I kind of went through. I went through a bit of a journey of games to play. Um, I had, didn't jump on the Dead Space train. Uh, I haven't played okay. too many brand new games this year so far. And I was searching for something that was slow, something that was simple, something that was like, I don't know, just chill, I guess, but wasn't, um, you know, the, the storybook games that we've played over the last few months. I wasn't looking for like anything really deep or long, even just something to sink my teeth into that was simple. Nice. And I, arrived initially at lawnmower simulator okay it was in the dead of winter we i think the first big snowfall that we had a, two three weeks ago uh or one of the big ones that we had it was like the day after i'm like i'm fed up with shoveling i'm fed up with the snow at the moment i'm gonna go back to the summer yep. and i've said it in the past on this podcast and uh, just in general i love cutting grass man i love it i think it's fun like it smells sure. amazing and uh, that's all I need <laughs> and it's chill. Um, okay. So the game itself was on game pass. So it was very easy for me to just hit install. Let's give it a shot. Right. Yeah. Um, and you know, these are the, I, I put in our, our document. It's, it's a chore game where, you know, something like this, or if there's like a cooking game, that's a first person view uh, much like this is, you know, it's sort of, everyday things it's um i know there's games where you can like open up your own shop and cafe and things like that this it's that sort of feel right yep. you know it doesn't look incredible it doesn't move incredibly well it kind of feels like it's a little bit on like an older engine you know it's usually smaller teams that are making them it's really just for the experience of being able to just do something like this and sort of gamify doing a chore essentially yep. um and this is yes it's lawnmower simulator but it's like it's grass cutting company simulator is essentially what it is. So you it. start off, you, you, you have like a basic logo and outfit and character. You can name them whatever you want. You can name your company, whatever you want. And you start with a weed whacker and a riding mower. And you get to choose between, I think, two or three of each. They all have a cost associated with them. And you start cutting lawns. Essentially, you, you go to a property. You have a couple of minutes to walk around and pick up items like sticks and frisbees and sometimes a wine bottle is just hanging out in the middle of the lawn okay. um, and you pick those up so that you don't run over them essentially very, very much a chore yeah, right <laughs> of course normal stuff yeah exactly um you know those wine bottles that you just leave out in the middle of the yard uh, on, a, there, yeah. on a sunday afternoon yeah it is yeah, what yeah. it is 
Um, and then it's it's up to you to cut how, however efficient, as efficiently or however, whatever order you want to do it in. Okay. Um, some lawns are more complicated than others because they'll have big flower beds or complicated flower beds with different shapes and stuff. And it's really just up to you to be as accurate and cover as much space and cut as much as you can within a time limit. Now, the game doesn't just stop. The level doesn't just stop at that time limit. You just get a bonus if you're do to do it under 30 minutes or under 25 minutes or whatever, okay. right? Um, so what's nice about it is that you don't like it's nice to have that bonus, but it's not going to break the game. You don't feel like you've lost money. They're not going to not pay you if you don't do it in half an hour. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's not like the guy's going to come out and, and you know, chase you away if, if you don't yeah. cut the lawn on time. Um, and it, and it's fun, you know, like it's it's very simple. It, it's it's one of those games that um, I think I would have stuck with it a little longer if it wasn't just sound effects there's essentially no music while you're playing um oh, it's just all environmental okay. and like that's okay because i got birds chirping and you know you can even hear the street behind you like it's it, it's not just dead air the sure. entire time and just a lawnmower running and what's also interesting they go through the detail of like every lawnmower sounds different it feels different you have to worry about your momentum going up and down hills and make sure you don't like spin out and and, you know, bust the grass with your wheel. You don't uh, cut down flowers, you know, things like all these little right. details. And, and oh, that's fine. It adds a little bit more of like gamification to things where you get a penalty if you accidentally cut a flower down or something like that. Um, or you bump into a, 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 oh my God, a tree and you create some damage or something. Okay, You'll sure. get a couple bucks off your, your thing. Um, all that's fine. The, the levels, sometimes I go into it and go like, oh, yeah half an hour pff, i got this property it's just a square i got this thing and then 35 <laughs> minutes later i'm still cutting i'm like oh my god oh, no. i am not efficient at all <laughs> <laughs> um and the reason why i mentioned like some sometimes that feels like it drags on and why it might need like a little bit of music and stuff this feels like the perfect kind of game that could be on like the original xbox for example mm -hmm. and you can load up your own music and and i was gonna play say with your own music. This, yeah this sounds like a game that you it is perfect just to have like a podcast on in the background yeah, I, absolutely. And, and you know, I don't mind the sound effects. I don't mind like having, you know, the lawnmower running. None of that bothers me. And it's it's fairly well done, too. Um, but it's it's just that. Yeah. Right. It's very, very simple. Uh, the movement of, of you walking around in first person to go and like pick up your weed whacker and then go and pick up the item and then go. And get, it's very it's it's just really there to get you on a mower and drive around and just do all that. And And it's 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 fine. I probably played more of it than I probably thought I would uh, and enjoyed my time with it. But then I was like, OK, I, I get it. You know, I don't need to do I, I got I think I got the properties that were like 45 minute limits or hour limits. And I'm like, I'm not oh, wow. I'm not doing that. <laughs> like, <laughs> I just I'm not I'm not going to. So I moved sure. on to a game that I played previously, which is also sort of a chore game, but it's also sci fi at the same time. And it is called Hard Space Shipbreaker. Also on Game oh, Pass, okay. yeah, yeah, and available on Steam and other platforms and everything. But uh, it was in like early access and beta and stuff for like a really long time up until I want to say around this time last year. Maybe it was in the spring or summer. Um, and then I think when it hit 1.0 is when it came to to Game Pass on PC gotcha. and on console. Uh, and essentially, you are this person in the far future where you're break. You are part of this like big corporation that grabs old ships like cargo ships or fighter jets or you know all these really like advanced different ships that are from outer space and stuff that need to be broken down because they're not being used anymore so by broken down is you have to literally break this thing into piece by piece by piece by piece oh, and wow. throw it into like one of them is called the barge which is where it's like electronics essentially so like a computer or mm -hmm. Uh, a dashboard or uh, a, a door thing that will, will open up the the door to get into the spaceship and stuff. Those little items like that. And then there's a furnace where it would be like, you know, a piece of metal that's not really worth anything, but needs to be broken down. So you throw it into a furnace. And then there's other ones that are worth something that would be like aluminum or different other, other types of material that get thro thrown into a processor. So you have three different places to put all these things in. And it's your job to work down your massively massive debt that you have working for this company. And it's not just go in there and break things down and just throw it in different places. You're in a jet pack, in a jet suit, and you're working with lack of gravity. Sometimes you go into the ship and there is gravity because you're going to close the door and now you're 
on your feet and whatever. Yep. Um, but it gets complicated because there'll be like a power generator. And to shut down the power generator properly, you have to go to three different parts of the ship and turn off the power oh, cells see, in sure. order to properly take that out. Because if you don't, the whole ship's going to explode. Yep. And not only do you die, but you lose a vast amount of the money and the ability to get rid of the things that you're supposed to be breaking down. Um, and these are all broken down into 15 minute segments. Each level is about 15 minutes. And that's your quote unquote, your day. That's your shift. And okay. you have 15 minutes. But you will not finish a ship a ship in 15 minutes. It will literally take you three, four, sometimes five shi the, the ships and, and shifts to do it. And you're just piece by piece. You're going in there. Like you see this giant ship has all these gas tanks on the outside. It's very intricate. And then at the end of it, you go, I just broke that whole thing down. I just <laughs> I, like, where did everything just go? And, sure, sure. and, you know, you've been playing it for an hour and you've done three or four shifts and you just, I sit there going, Oh yeah, I did that. Like that was cool. That was so creative and such an interesting way to do something like that. Yeah. That um and it's it's got like this great like atmospheric music to it too. So like if you get to a place where there's like one of those generators for example, uh the music kind of ramps up a little bit because you have to be extra careful and then sure. you can hear your character breathing heavily when you like oh, grab okay. a certain item that's really delicate and all that kind of stuff and you have these different tools that you can cut metal or you can you have a grappler which is like grabs items for you you're not doing things by hand it's like okay. this pull mechanic push and pull mechanic that you have yep. with it and it's all just really really well done um you know the anti-gravity stuff sometimes you get really like disoriented because it's all first person um and it'd be like such a cool game in vr i think but it's also very yeah. chill because you can do it at your own speed you're not going to get penalized for not doing it within 15 minutes Okay. You're just going to go back and you're just going to make money in a shorter period of time or get your debt down in a shorter period of time. Yeah. Um, and then there's an overall arching story to it as well, oh, where nice. you're essentially part of this like group of people that are also ship breakers and you're all kind of talking in like your own channel and stuff when everyone like starts their shift. And it kind of seems like I'm not through it yet. And I think I'm about like halfway through the game or something, but it seems like everyone's trying to like get back at the man and the man okay. is the company that everyone works for. Yeah. Um, and you can like they've added this thing in the lot since I think the, the initial release where you can like take parts that have fallen off the ship and you can repair your own ship. And then when you repair your uh, own ship, you have access to other things as well. Sure. So you're sort of stealing things behind the scenes kind of idea. Yeah. Um, anyways. I've been talking too long about these, but that's my chore game story. <laughs> no, no, I, I I love that. I I'm kind of interested in it specifically in the uh, the second one. That one sounds right up my alley because, like you, I do like the simulator, the chore games. I 100 mm -hmm. did power washing simulator because right, I, yes, right. I meant like, to mention that you played that methodical, too, yeah. uh, like chill games. Now I'm 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 curious about that 15 minute like interval thing. So yeah. when the shift ends, is that kind of like a save state for you? So any progress you made in those 15 minutes is kind of captured yes. saved you can't okay yeah so you it'll like so the the guy who's sort of like your boss yeah. um it's interesting because your boss he sounds like a like really like stereotypical like cowboy okay. and then all the music is very like old stringy cowboy music that you've heard from like the 40s or 50s movies and stuff and it i'm like oh this is not my kind of music but it for some reason it like fits being in yeah. outer space i don't know what it is and it's all chill it's not it doesn't speed up too much sometimes it like I said, the volume ramps up or the atmospheric sound kind of ramps up at times. Um, but that guy, I mentioned him because he'll say like, hey, uh, uh, shipbreaker, you got uh, five minutes left in your shift in case you're not looking at the timer at the top. Gotcha. So do what you got to do and uh, let's get back safely. And then and, and then you're like, OK, and then you'll get another ping that says two minutes left in your shift, shipbreaker. We'll uh, we'll see you back at, at the station, like little things like that. Um, and. Yeah, when, and then you just take yourself back to sort of the area where you, I guess, where yeah. you spawn or where you start your shift. Um, and that's essentially your save point. It says, do you want to enter the station? You say yes. It takes you back. And then you wake up the next day. And then you start your shift the next day. And that's oh, okay. essentially what it is. So it's like 15 cool. minute segments. I like um, that. Because it yeah, makes it yeah, seem like a little bad. more obtainable. Like you can pop in, do maybe one, two, maybe even three, yeah. depending. And yeah. then kind of call it because, yeah, otherwise it kind of seems like an overwhelming task because thinking back to like power washing simulator, thank God you have stuff like quick resume and stuff like that, because otherwise you go into a certain map. And it's like, oh, this is going to take Massive. me <laughs> two hours, maybe three hours throw on a podcast. But like, yeah, maybe I've only got half an hour to to kind of play. So it's, it's nice knowing. Yeah. Okay. 
I'm not going to get halfway through this and be like, well, I'm tired. I don't want to play anymore and then lose yeah. everything. Or Yeah. And, th- and this also, if you're on Xbox, has the quick resume as well. Cool. So if you yeah. pause it in the middle of a thing, it, it's totally fine. I think I didn't play it for a couple weeks and it, you know, like I, mean, I haven't really shut off my Xbox. So it was it was fine. But uh, but those 15 minute segments, yeah, are attainable. And when you start your shift over every even if it's floating in the middle of space and you didn't quite get to it in time, everything just stays in one in cool. one place. Like, like you don't that. have to worry about things being destroyed or whatever like everything just stays there and um yeah it it just it's a really it's chill but also also very interesting because i I like how there's a story behind it whereas like with i don't know about power wash simulator but like with with lawnmower simulator it's 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 really just go and do your thing and then go and buy a new mower and then go and do your thing and and that's the cycle whereas for this there's little things in between like upgrading your equipment or you need to watch your oxygen level and you have to make sure that you can, if, if you need oxygen in the middle of your shift, you have to go get it and then go back to your work area. Like little things like that, that, that add more dynamic stuff to it and, yeah. and more realism, I guess, in a way. Sure. Um, but I, I highly recommend hard space ship breaker to, to anybody. Um, it doesn't matter if it's on game pass or not. If it sounds like your jam and you're like into sci-fi, like I am and like almost any way, it's really it's a really cool way to get into like a sci-fi world um and a chill way to get in the sci-fi world which doesn't happen often i think so i like that um, yeah yeah i'm definitely yeah. gonna install it and give it a shot i i think it's right yeah. up my alley yeah I, I think do a couple ships because like you ramp up to like different um uh i guess complexity the ships yeah. get bigger there's more pieces there's different types of engines there's different types of fuel like you have to like for example like i can say this again i'm gonna keep going but there's like um like a jet engine for example like you want to take off that jet engine and send it down to the barge to get your money for it or whatever but you can't just pull that thing apart you have to shut the fuel down you have to take the fuel tank out to get rid of the fuel tank put it where it needs to be and then you can take like it and just that one piece sometimes takes an entire 10 minutes just to do that because it's very intricate it's like it's like disassembling a very intricate lego is what sure. it is yeah it's yeah, yeah. really really cool like that um eventually you get used to like oh yeah this is a this is a piece that's probably gonna go here this is a piece that's probably gonna go here but uh no ship is exactly the same which is also really cool too so it's almost like semi procedurally generated in that way okay. um but uh, but yeah, it's really it's really cool. Hard space shipbreaker. There we go. Highly recommend. Okay, right. Steve, <laughs> your, t- <Yeah>. your turn. <laughs> no, <Sorry. laughs> over to me. Um, yeah, one, one game I, I want to talk about. Um, I, I guess it's a great segue because we're talking about really cool, chill, atmospheric games. Uh, mm. this season, a letter to the future is uh, developed by a Canadian studio, actually by a Scavenger Studio, and oh, yeah, this yeah. game uh, is a PlayStation exclusive. It came out. About a week ago at this point uh, as we're recording it and i i fell in love with this game um it's very interesting it's very yeah chill atmospheric and kind of something you can very bite-sized you can easily play through this game in an afternoon and evening if you really wanted to or split it up into like two uh kind of play sessions probably about like four to five hours if you really wanted to get into it um but it's really it's it's story, it's kind of themes and messages that kind of really pulled me in. So basically what it is, is that uh, you play in the role of Estelle, a young woman, and you're almost in this kind of post-apocalyptic world. It's kind of like, you know, Earth as it is, um, but there's a very there's a lot of differences there, um, which kind of feed into the story. But yeah, it's this post-apocalyptic post-apocalyptic world probably about like 500 years in the future after what they call seasons uh which is Uh. basically a a cataclysmic flood comes in wipes everything clean the remaining civilization kind of takes over kind of rebuilds for you know a couple hundred years another season comes in kind of wipes everything clean Ah, okay so this is after one of those seasons is essentially this is about like three or four so okay. one hit, uh, civilization uh, rebuilt. There was this war that also coincided with another season. And gotcha. then we're basically at this third season on the cusp of it kind of rolling over. And basically what you're doing as Estelle is uh, you're tasked with going out into the world and kind of documenting everything. Because at the same time, 
one of the main differences in in this world that's different from ours is that there's this kind of disease virus kind of phenomenon where people just forget memories um so oh. uh so the the task of like obtaining knowledge and maintaining knowledge of like previous you know eras is basically non-existent um, right people can't just pass on that knowledge like we would you know now and everything uh sure. so estelle goes out and she's basically um brought it upon herself to kind of document it uh you know just everyday life how how people interact with each other what they do to like celebrate birthdays and and, and painting on the walls um uh, and it's all documented via taking photos and she's got like a tape recorder with her so she'll oh, hold okay. a microphone and kind of um Record oh yeah, I'm seeing right now in like the, in the trailer, she's like has has the thing up to like a, a record player, yeah, or up to uh, uh, falls like uh, exactly. waterfalls. Like yeah. that's cool. Like yeah. simple little things like that. Yeah, that's that's basically it. And um, the game itself doesn't really have a um, an overarching plot. It's basically just go out, document as much as you want, and everything that you find very you know, you yourself as the player, what, whatever you find interesting, you put into this kind of scrapbook. And every okay. time you feed more info into the scrapbook, Estelle will kind of um, reminisce or kind of reflect on what she's putting in there. Like the record player, for instance, she'll kind of talk about it and be like, oh, you know, this is how people listen to music. It was a beautiful thing, blah, blah, blah. Um, and yeah, it, it's this four hour kind of close experience you're sent into this beautiful hub world you get around via like a bicycle um at, at the time that you you get into this uh semi open world um everyone's basically left already because they know the season's kind of rolling over so they're like mm. okay the blood's coming in let's get out but then there are so like maybe like five or six um remaining inhabitants so you can interact with them kind of get their views on on this current state of the world what's happened in the past and stuff like that uh before they themselves um kind of forget and yeah it, it's kind of interesting in that you know it's a post-apocalyptic world again but there's no like violence there's no combat in this game there's nothing really like threatening other than this you know looming flood but even then like when they talk about it it's not meant to be like sad or right horrific or anything it's kind of this beautiful like passing of the torch or a new era of of life and stuff like that so it, it's an interesting game in that you know a lot of games just don't deal with you know gameplay mechanics that have nothing to do with you know combat or anything so it's a very passive right experience yeah uh, lack of combat is is almost like a like a like a plus for me at exactly. a certain point for sure because it's so refreshing and, and the other thing yeah. i really like about it is that it's not one of these you know open world checkbox games where it's like oh go out and get 10 photos of a frog or something like that <laughs> it's it's literally <laughs> go out and if something interests you or something speaks to you dave the player take a picture of it listen to it with your uh a tape recorder if not pass it keep going so, so that yeah so that was that was gonna be my question is there like a checklist that she has nope. in her in a notebook or something like nope. literally you can go up to anything like you can go up to, to what so so there are things like if you're just not out anything in the middle but you know what i mean nowhere. like yeah exactly something that's anything interactable of in some way kind of consequence like even yeah. like uh there were things that i didn't even expect um for her to like kind of react to or to give any kind of like uh feedback or yeah uh, perspective on Th she does but then other things i kind of expected her to and i was like oh doesn't really have anything to say that's fine i just kind of put it back but even if she uh, estelle doesn't really reflect on it gets added to your notebook anyways oh okay okay it's important to you the player right right uh, it's, it's right. all about the player agency and stuff like that so even though you're not getting any kind of like backstory or it, it feels like it's a uh, uh, impactful to the game it's still impactful to you so it still gets added in there and you can right it's it's sort it's of added. like i mean you're you're really being put in in her shoes where exactly. you're choosing what is important for the future to be able to understand what came before so absolutely that really gets gets you into that uh into the character itself so that that's very cool it's very interesting I, i'm just wondering i mean i don't want to like the quote unquote spoil what happens or whatever, but it doesn't seem like, like it seems like there is sort of a story arc, but you said yeah. it's very loose and you can kind of, so like is the end point just because the season ends or is it kind of like, or is that too much to give away? I'm just curious how, no, cause you could, no, could I, you just roam longer than those four or five hours as long as you want? Or? So the game's framework is you, you 
uh, hit this valley, uh, the, what is the, like the open uh, hub Area, world. Yeah. And essentially, um, the game is laid out of like 24 hours ish, where okay. at you you arrive at at in the morning and at uh, sunset, what they call like the shrine, the doors will open up and you you kind of can head in there. And that's basically your cue to um, progress into the end game and, you know. Gotcha roll into the credits and everything but the time you spend in between you can spend as much time as you, as you want oh, okay. into the hub world okay. or as little um as long as you get to that certain point where you know the game indicates hey you're approaching sunset the shrine's open at this point you can stay into that world or you can okay. just hit credits yeah um, so it's not like there's yeah. a running clock like an actual clock no. running. and, and that's yeah. kind of okay. what my my worry was uh heading yeah. into this game not knowing too much i was like is this going to be like a majora's mask kind of thing where you know there is some sort of back end kind of pushing you along through the the game right not really Wh which um, would make sense but it would kind of get of take you away from that sort of chill approach and sort of do right. your own have your own uh uh I guess path that you want to yeah. take and everything. So exactly. Uh, that's cool. That's great. I'm, that's, that's a very passive experience. Um, yeah. Wonderfully bite-sized. Yeah. Looks the, great. the art direction is amazing. The only yeah. thing that I will say that kind of, I was a little stale on was the riding the bike. Um, okay. To pedal, you have to uh, like alternate between hitting the, uh, the triggers on the, the gotcha. dual sense controller. And that just kind of, it was cool at first because you kind of feel like the tension on the dual sense triggers and everything. But yeah. after a while, I was like, I, I just don't really, I don't really just care press about forward. This. I, exactly. <laughs> I, I wish I could just go out and and do the thing or like have like that. an auto run sort of thing. Press X twice and then exactly. Just, you know, yeah, yeah. But otherwise, it, I think it's a really cool experience. Uh, nice. Love the fact that it's from a Canadian studio. Um, and yeah, I, I think it just has a very interesting take on you know post-apocalyptic environments and stuff like that and not even having combat in there awesome yeah. stuff I, I i really think that more games should challenge themselves and challenge the player and being like here's a game you just exist you don't have to worry about fighting enemies and stuff like that i, I personally dig that stuff a lot so yeah uh, same. same i highly recommend this game i i think it's a really cool addition to the uh, All right. it's going it's going on my wish list for sure no. <laughs> i i saw that that people were talking about it reviewing it and stuff but now it's it's kind of confirmed this is my kind of game too so yeah. <laughs> that's perfect awesome um, on the opposite end of that, my other game that I've played over the last yeah. couple of weeks, I busted open GoldenEye 007. Uh, oh, I yeah. specifically played the Xbox version of it. Me too. Uh, I do not have, yeah, I do not have the expansion pack pass thing for the Switch. Sure. Um, I, I think for me personally, it sounds like this is the way to to go based on just the control scheme um, yeah. because it's dual stick controls, and I think that makes a giant difference uh 25 years after this game came out so Huge. um so sounds like you played it too have you enjoyed yourself so far yeah uh it's, it's really funny because uh, i distinctly remember probably five years ago i was at fan expo toronto uh just wandering you know the, the aisles and everything and i saw a vendor and he had golden eye for the n64 and i had since lost my cartridge i had no idea yeah. where it went and i was like Oh, I need this. Like, I just need it back into my my catalog and everything. I I shelled out probably I think one hundred and twenty dollars for it. And With the box and everything? No, <laughs> just just, just on its own. Yeah. Oh man. That's yeah. Wow. Wild. Um, wild. I mean, stuff. I mean, I have games sitting behind me. A lot of these are not. We're not cheap, but no. but like. Yeah, like if you want to get Goldeneye now, even like loose, just whatever in a random store. Yeah, you're you're paying minimum seventy bucks just for just for the cart, which is insane. Anyways, insane. Go ahead. <laughs> um, no, I was just gonna say uh, I got it home, booted it up, and I was like, okay, this is really cool. I invited a, a bunch of friends over. We got pizza, and I started nice. playing. I was like, oh, this fucking sucks. <laughs> like just, just having the one stick. I was like, oh my god, I can't play this. <laughs> and I never touched it since. Does like, the pizza the, taste worse because of just like it just no, the pizza soured tasted the taste great. The, okay, the, good. The eating was, was great, but I could not bring myself to play that game anymore. <laughs> so like you're saying, bringing it back to the Xbox kind of quote unquote remaster 4K and everything. I'm, I really like this. I really yeah. like the fact that now we have, a, have it and make it, it, it makes it feel contemporary in some ways. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's true. And that's another thing. It's not just like, it sounds 
we're, we're talking from a perspective where we haven't played the Switch version yet, but sure. they they specifically say that the Xbox One is a remaster and the Switch One is a port, right? With with some changes, with some alteration, you know, so the controls work a li- little bit smoother and whatever. So yeah. it's not it's not literally just like throw the ROM on there and that's it. Like with the other sixty four games, they've done something, but it doesn't sound like they've done as much because sure, this game is twenty five years old. But I would say that aside from blocky characters and very, you know, straight faces and not a lot of detail in some of the walls and textures and things like that, mm-hmm. I think the the remaster or the reimagine of the game they did on this Xbox version looks pretty sharp. I mean, it looks what what's great is like when you go back to a lot of retro games, especially ones that are like 3D based, like 64 games, for example, uh, or, or early PlayStation or PS2 games, you remember them in a certain way. Right. You remember, oh, this is the way this game looked. This is the way it played. Just like your experience with GoldenEye. It's like you had this memory of how great it was and everything. But as far as like the way games look, this game, I think, looks the way I remember it looking. Yep. In its current form, in its Xbox form. And that is hard to do, honestly. But they didn't take it away. It's not like they just they completely started from scratch. In some way, it still keeps that charm, that old charm, but also looks like it's a little bit shinier around the edges, almost literally. Um so yeah, and and I think just being able to play it with with the twin sticks with, with dual mm-hmm. stick controls, very simple. You know, triggers to shoot, the left triggers to move your cursor. All that stuff is so much more difficult to do in the original version. Um, on not just because of the controller, but just because what they were capable of at the time. That like yep. it makes a huge difference, and it makes me want to keep playing this game. And I don't know. I I just I. I have had a really good time with it. I've only played, you know, on my own single player because they only have couch co-op on the Xbox version. So that's a disadvantage is that you can play online on yeah. on Switch. So that's really cool. That would be fun to experience. But um, I've made it most of the way through the campaign so far. And I would say that I'm surprised at how much I forgot about. Yes. I, like like different tasks that you need to do, because I think most of my memory or at least later parts of my memory of playing this game, not only are of, of multiplayer, which fair enough, I think for everybody it is, but mm-hmm. is also like, let's just pick a level and just mess around. Right. Like that's, that's what I did. That's what I remember doing. Cause I, I beat the game on the difficulties. I, I did all the levels. I went from start to finish on all three difficulties, like back in the day, not now, but back in the day. And then all I did was sure. I'm going to play the highest difficulty, pick a level that has a lot of enemies and just do silly shit. Like that's exactly. and, and have all the, have all the cheat codes on and, you know, all the cheats and like, invincible but have just mines or just rockets or just knives or whatever and i haven't gotten to any of that stuff yet so i'm like oh yeah that's right there's there's tasks that i have to do (laughs) objectives in order to beat this level properly i completely forgot (laughs) dude i'm 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 right there with you i'm only a couple uh missions in because i did spend a whole bunch of time getting my my partner in for local co-op because she's never played the original golden eye all, all nice. that much so i was like i sat her down i was like listen we're gonna go through a little history lesson of my childhood my entire childhood of like competitive first person shooters um so we spent a, a little bit of time with that and that was a lot of fun but then yeah get, other than the first mission the damn mission which i think i remember like front to back even yeah. all the uh, objectives and everything for some reason they're all burned into my brain but the uh, the second one i think it's a facility i think it's the second map I think as so. soon as yeah. i got in there and i got through the um the little tunnel system you you drop down i was like i remember this map i don't remember what the hell i'm supposed to do yeah because there's no it, way you're reading those objectives either right like you're just hitting cool. start yeah exactly and <laughs> and there's something there's something beautiful about that because I mean, it, it's it's such a time capsule of how games were designed back then. Where it yeah. is like like we're talking about do the do these four objectives, X fill the the level. That's all you have mm. to do. It's not find these collectibles. Do this. Do that. Do that. Um, and even for its time, like the the level design of the, uh, some of these maps holds up incredibly. Even like the yeah. multiplayer versions. Just going back through there, I was like, the fact that these work in such like like people who know competitive games can go back to this and see exactly like how this game um inspired so many games that we're still playing today just based off how different levels like the elevation the fact that you know a lot of these uh maps have you know ramps that go up to a second floor so that you know if you're on that second floor and you see someone go by like that gives you a competitive advantage it's it's kind of crazy to go back and kind of view it from a lens of you know 
at this point what feels like eons so it, it's a really yeah. cool uh, like little experiment but also kind of like a, a, a trip down memory lane where it is like let's bring an old game back and make it feel new the loading times are awesome oh Jumping it's, into a match it's and, nothing yeah, yeah. It's, it's kind of wild yeah it's it's great i, I think it, it you know it feels pretty good it's it's uh it's you know it, it just yeah I, i'm gonna get through the whole thing and then i'm gonna go back to some of these levels and just mess around like yeah. that's what i'm gonna try and do I, I you know i'm not gonna i'm gonna take my time with it there's no rush to play this this game i've done it all before sort of thing but but I, i'm pleasantly surprised at how well it, it controls and how well it looks uh the music is still bopping it's still great to sort of hear the like oh, how yeah intense and how great the music continues to be and every level is something different um i i don't know if it's like remastered sound as well but it could be um nothing sounds janky nothing plays janky like i haven't run into any of that kind of stuff and and it's yeah it's been it's been fun it's been fun i'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna keep it on the xbox and i'm gonna go back to it every every few days i'm gonna like play stage i'm gonna play stage like you know right. It's 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 little things like one of the levels where natalia is is in the jail you start in the jail and you have to like get yourself out of the I, it's one of the bunker levels i think it's like about oh, halfway yeah. through the game and i remember being this is the same thing where you said you remember the map and remember like certain objectives for this one for some reason i remembered when i played it don't let her out of the jail until after you do all the objectives because otherwise she follows you around and you can accidentally shoot her and kill her right. and then the mission has failed because she's dead so I was like, okay, I'm going to leave you in jail. I'm going to go kill a bunch of guys. I'm going to blow up all the cameras. <laughs> come back. I'm gonna yeah, I'm going to go collect the things I need to do. I'm going to open the safe. And then when everyone's gone, you can come with me. And then you can yeah. open the door and then we can leave. And like somehow I knew how to do that. And in 20 minutes, I was done the level. And I was like, this is great. This is awesome. <laughs> yeah, that, so that's it, really it's awesome. Fun. Yeah. Uh, it's and the fact really, really that there's fun. achievements too. I mean, got to yes. play it on Xbox then. Yeah. Oh, that's the other thing. I, I meant to mention that to you too because of achievements. I. I got about, I, I want to say it's about halfway through the game. I don't remember which exact mission it was or whatever, but the, um, and you'll remember, you know the name because I don't know what the name of them are, but when, when you get an achievement, it has a little diamond on it. Was that like a yeah, rare achievement? Rare, yeah. Yeah. So it means like less people that are playing this game have gotten this far basically or gotten this yeah. achievement at this point, yeah. right? But halfway through the game, just finishing a mission said like 4% of people have gotten this. And I go, That's pretty wild. What? That's it? Yep. I'm only like, you know, eight missions, 10 missions and I'm only halfway through this. Come on, people, let's go. And this isn't like hardest difficulty. This is the medium regular difficulty. I was I was very surprised how quickly I hit that. And I didn't do anything special. I just no. played through it in a couple hours. That was it. Um, so I, I hope that number I hope that achievement does not become a rare achievement because I think people should play this. And there's a lot of hype around it. And I think. Um, I, I, I'm, I was surprised because there was so much hype when this dropped and when they announced it last year that I thought for sure that people were going to be running through this like no problem. Um, or maybe I just have no life and I'm running through it and I'm just that much faster than other people. I don't know. <laughs> no, I, I think it's it came out at a very interesting time um, right now. Like when it dropped, I know so many people were, were into it, but I just I do wonder like how many people jumped in for maybe like a match or maybe mm -hmm. one level and they're like yep this is the game i remember on to something else <laughs> right um, right or maybe there's that many this. more people maybe there's that many more people playing it on switch compared to xbox at the moment it could be that, that too. that's, and that's really fine because because yeah. i do feel like a lot of people do honor the the fact that this is like a historical nintendo game i mean the yeah. fact that you know rare even got this like i the whole reason like why we've waited so long for this game is because of the licensing, the, yeah. the, the entanglement of rare Nintendo Xbox, the, the James Bond IP, like the fact that so this even happened, <laughs> it's the so fact that this even happened, like I'm, I'm astounded. So yeah, um, it, it's really neat, but I, I do wonder, yeah, I, I wonder how many people are just went straight to the switch and they're like, I need it here. I need it on my Nintendo. Or, or they went to Switch because it's online. They just want to play multiplayer. And that's that fine. Too. That's totally fair. Like that's where yeah. I think that's where most people's memories are. And I think they are for me too. But yeah, sure. that, that could that could be it. Um, I, but yeah. if you have if you have an Xbox, I think, you know, getting rare replay, if you purchase rare replay, I think you get it as like a free update, I think is how yep. they did it. But if you have Game Pass, you can get Game Pass and and it's it's on there, no problem. It takes literally exactly. like two minutes to install and stuff. So okay. So speaking of Nintendo. Let's get to what I said at the beginning of the episode. I said it yeah. was the elephant of the room, so to speak. 
we had a Nintendo Direct as of this recording just a couple of hours ago, and uh, they dropped anything from small updates and games like they normally do here and there to big name drops and big title drops. And this is one of the longer ones, I would say, that they've done. It was 40, 45 minutes. I mean, that's yeah. long. Usually these things are 15 minutes and, and you're out kind of thing uh, on average. Yeah. So there's a lot of stuff to run through. Um, Steve, you were nice enough to make a little bit of a list here. Uh, let, let's let's start with the top one because I think this is a big release um, sure. for sure. Uh, Pikmin 4, I don't recall if this date was confirmed until now, but Pikmin 4 is June 21st of this year. Yeah, I, th I think... Yeah, again, I think that this is basically was a confirmation of the release date, and then we got some gameplay for it. Uh, this yeah. is what kind of kicked off the the show. Um, I didn't include all of the announcements here because I I think that there's too you know, many. Just, there's oh, too many. Spe speaking of that, Bobby's not with us because he's working much harder than we are and right. creating the yeah. content for console creatures on the website. Um, and, and writing all these little smaller things that we may not even be able to get to or some of the larger details that we might miss because the man himself, the editor in char editor in chief and the, the, the honcho himself is working his butt off at the moment while we just exactly. sit here and we and gab about games. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, we, we got the comfy, cozy job here of, of putting together this show while Bobby is out there crunching the letters, crunching the numbers. Uh, so shout out to him. So anything that we do miss or, uh, you know, look over, please just go to consolecreatures.com and you you guys can find everything there that we. Uh, yeah, there, but, there's there's no chirp in the fact that Bobby isn't here uh, today because he is he's kicking ass right now. Exactly. Uh, creating, creating good content. So, yeah. Bobby, we miss you, man. We'll see you next week. And uh, thanks for, for the hard work as we that's sit it. here like that's it. <laughs> it's so just comfy. Um, no i i don't know are you a pikmin guy did uh pikmin 4 kind of there, there it, it's some... not i've i've played i think a little bit of the first maybe second one and and that's it i, I never had a gamecube i only had a couple of friends who did yeah and i think one of them had pikmin so it's never really it's never been my thing i i i think they're interesting i think they're games that i might enjoy um i just don't have a draw i i i'm gonna say this from the start overall there's a lot of content in this nintendo direct very few of these things got me very excited i'm just gonna say that right off the top and uh, you know some of this stuff is just not my jam and that's that's just the way it is but also even some of the big releases and and announcements i'm like Shmeh. but we'll get to them as as we go so no pikmin is not not really it falls into that category where i'm like i'm interested but i'm not into the you know series because i haven't really yeah had much experience with it. So it's a little hard to say, but I don't know. What about you? Uh, I'm kind of right there with you, like yeah. beat by beat. I, I think I played <laughs> Pikmin 2, um, and that was my only real exposure uh, through a friend. I was like, this game's cool for its time, but it's not something I'll chase. Even watching Pikmin, the, the Pikmin 4 trailer, I was like, good for people who are like stoked for this game. I think that there's going to be a lot of content here. It's not for me. I don't think that I'll invest that much time into it. Right. Maybe something down the line will kind of draw me to it. But right now I'm, I'm not really feeling that. Yeah. And more One so of those to titles your... you'll get to eventually sort of thing. If, if that. Maybe. <laughs> if that... <laughs> Maybe if we're... You could say if... no, it's yeah. okay. <laughs> I, I don't I don't want to write it totally off because I did think that some of the, like the, the stuff there, like the ice Pikmin that kind of looked yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Freezing yeah. the water. I think this is a really cool mechanic. I don't yeah. want to write it off entirely, but uh, just knowing how busy this year is going to be, probably I'll I know. never play this. Um, yeah. And then more so to your point of like a lot of these announcements just not hitting for me. I was kind of right there with you up until a certain point. And when we get there, I'll, I'll, I'll say it because okay. after that, I'll, I, I want to call a start calling Nintendo, the comeback kid, because they, they brought me back in. I was like, man, <laughs> this is such a mid uh, direct and we'll kind of get more into it, I guess. Uh, yeah. And, you know, in our overall thoughts, but I was like, ah, I don't really know, but then whew, they got me, but they uh, got you. <laughs> they got me. Um, yeah. And then I guess uh, some other kind of like quick spot news. They, they, announced the uh expansion pass uh number one and number two for splatoon three kind of yep. went through the new waves of um fire emblems expansion pass i just want to say a quick aside i love the fact that nintendo is kind of uh um keeping to this uh verbiage of the expansion pass I oh. just think it keeps everything super clean. Everyone kind of knows this. This means like, okay, you got the base game, you got the expansion pass. That's DLC. I, I for some reason that just I like that shit. Well, to me, the like expansion to me is oh, it's the expansion to Warcraft two. Oh, it's the expansion to Diablo sure. two. Like that's yeah, what yeah, I yeah. think of. So it's like oh, it's the expansion to Red Alert. Like though, that's what I think of. So when I hear expansion, 
whether it's expansion content, expansion pass, like whatever you want to call it, I know what that means. I know right. that it's added to the initial game. And I'm like, great. If I want to pay for it, I'll pay for it. If I don't, I don't. And I move on. And that's it. See, so yeah, I agree. I'm with you. It, it it always draws back to me with the N64 and the expansion pack that you put into the... Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. I just I, love that I they're bringing that kind of behind me. I, 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 I'm, <laughs> I'm sure you do. Exactly. So you know exactly what I'm talking about. And for some reason, yeah, yeah just the fact that they're taking ownership of that name, I don't know. I just kind of like that. I like for, it. No, it's like true. It's branding. consistent, which is good. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah Fire Emblem and, and Splatoon, decent amount of stuff coming there. Um, and then uh, an Octopass Traveler 2 demo. I think that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. The first game's great. Uh, one of the very few sort of larger, I, I don't know if it's considered JRPG or not, but it's i, I would sure. say i yeah. guess that it is um also on game pass now by the way so great way to play oh, it that's right um the first one anyway uh to, to get people into the series i think it looks amazing i think it played really really great it's one of the very few rpgs of the style that hooked me uh i'm excited for the second one and i'm, I'm gonna give the the demo a, a shot so i think that's uh that sounds pretty cool so and it's me tough too. to do a demo for such a large rpg game like this so i'm curious as to how they're gonna do it so um, they did the same thing for Octopath Traveler, the first one. Oh, um, they did? Oh, okay. Yeah, they put out a demo for the eShop. And once again, uh, they did confirm all the progress carries over to the yeah, which is great. main game. Amazing. Great. I love that. I love the fact that Square Enix kind of does this over and over again, provides demos for their game so people can kind of just test it out. Yeah. Uh, so I'll, like you, it's available today uh, as we're recording this. So I'm, I'm going to install it, kind of try it out. I love I have my Switch one. in my hand. Maybe I'll just do it now. <laughs> There you go. There you go. I mean, Why I'm not? totally paying attention to what you're saying. <laughs> no, no, but you're in. You're you're locked in. I, I just that. reminded me. I was like, yeah. oh, I should download that. Yeah. Um, exactly. Yeah. So no, that's a good good way to get people uh, into it and, and do it again. The progress continuing thing is is an awesome Huge. part of it. So yeah. um, now uh, the Advance Wars one and two reboot camp uh, has been pushed. I think twice now. Yeah. Uh, maybe once, but uh, now confirmed April twenty first. So. Um, Happy birthday to me. I'm going to be picking that up <laughs> on that day. And uh, Wait, your birthday is out. April 21st? Yeah. My birthday is April 20th. <gasps> oh my God. Look at All us. All right, so are, are you going to play Advance Wars 1 or 2? No. <laughs> <laughs> you get one, I'll get two. Okay. It's like what, what brothers and sisters and, and siblings right. yeah, used to yeah, yeah, you get number one, I'll get number two. Or like That's... Pokemon Red and Pokemon Blue. Like which right. one are you going to get? <laughs> That's so funny. Um, yeah. I'm excited for this. So am I. I, yeah. I had I have very little experience with these games. Me too. So I'm excited to play the fact that they went all out. I know they have like huge clout behind them. So many people love the series yeah. and say these games are excellent, even for their time. Like it seems like the mechanics and everything were also like you're talking about Goldeneye, how it inspired a lot of things. Advance Wars did that a lot too for games. And yep. I I want to I want to play those games for that reason alone, honestly, is enough for me. So I'm I'm excited for this for sure. Yeah. Um just a, a funny anecdote. Um, Andrew. Your birthday is April 20th. No. Yeah. <laughs> a funny anecdote. Uh, we have a similar birthday. Um, uh, Andrew, who works for Nintendo Canada, anytime that I get the opportunity to talk to him, like whether at an event or anything, he always talks about Advance Wars. And ever mm. since like I met him and first uh, spoke to him about it, I was like, man, I, I really feel like, you know, I'm doing a disservice not playing this game. So Knowing that, you know, one and two are coming uh, out on the Switch, I'm like, okay, I'm finally going to sit down with these games because yeah. Yeah, many people praise praise this series and it's about time that I, you know, put some well, time in. And, and it's nice too, like, it seems like they were the type of games that were designed for handheld. So if you're playing on exactly. the couch with your Switch and everything or Switch Lite, like, yep. it's, it's going to fit with that experience as well. And they're going to bring it to like a nicer screen and console and everything. So yeah, I'm excited to play these. And then... Um, and then we get into some Switch Online news. Steve, what is Holy it, man? What shit, is it? They did it. Dave, they did it. They are bringing Game Boy and Game Boy Advance to Nintendo Switch Online and the expansion pass today. Boom. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. <laughs> I can't believe they're doing both. That, That's that, it. Yeah. Yeah, I can't believe they're doing both. I saw the Nintendo, I saw the the original Game Boy one. I'm like, I I love how they introed both of them. By the way, they showed yes. they showed the handhelds themselves, and they did the mm -hmm. opening because every time like that Game Boy Advance uh, intro little chime to me, like you know, every once in a while you see on Twitter, or you see online, like, oh, what's your favorite console boot up sound? To yeah. me, it's the Game Game Boy Advance. Like that's the one that chime stands out to me more than anything, and more than the PS One, you know, more than the original Xbox, like that one is what stands out. So I love that, that approach that they took. 
Um, yeah. So when I saw the original Game Boy, I'm like, oh, this is cool. Great. It's got like the same, you know, you can change some of the color on it and stuff as well. So it's as if you're playing Game Boy Color, essentially. Right. Yeah. Me, so so you go cool. through with the original Game Boy. I think they said that there was also Pocket and then Game Boy Color. Yeah. I love the fact that they're doing that. I think that's such a cool yeah. little touch for players. I, used, I played so many... Ri- I. My my original Game Boy eventually died out on me. I had a color and I had an advance and I played more color than I did out of any of the handhelds because it was just in that time. Me too. Or, and and yep. you could play the old Game Boy games and I always switched around the color. I always switched yep. around the gradient or whatever my I mean, quote unquote color that they sure that they had. But I did that all the time and it was so much fun to do that. I love that they included that little added feature. Um, yep. It's it's awesome. Um, yeah. It, were there any games that are available now, like in the first wave that had you go, like, had you popping off? Well, I, are they, are they behind me? No, they're probably in a box over here somewhere. Um, two of the three most played games for the original Game Boy are on, are included on this. That is Kirby's Dream Land yep. and, uh, and Mario 2 and the six golden coins or seven golden yep. coins, whatever six the golden number. coins. Yep. Though, two, those two games plus, uh, Wario Land 1 are the three games that I played the most growing up on any handheld. I whipped through those over and over and over again. So those three have me excited. I have them and I can play them in my advance that still works. So I don't need to necessarily play those ones on here, but I'm right. excited that other people get to play like a really weird Mario title. Oh my God. Um, it's so... And the very first title that Wario was introduced, by the way. Yep. So um, I think that's cool. A lot of people might not know that and experience that. And I think that's... That's fun. So that's the one that gets me excited uh, the most out of any of them are those two, even though I personally have no reason to necessarily play them on the Switch. So yeah. yeah I, I'm kind of right there with you. Kirby's Dreamland was the first game I ever beat. Um, nice. That So that one, as soon as they announced that, uh, I was I was popping off for that one. Uh, yeah. Six Golden Coins is another game that I, I treasure a lot. I think that one's such a weird game, especially on the handheld. Um, Wario Land 3, another awesome one. And then Link's Awakening DX. Uh, those yes, games. Yes, that's, that's great. It's so yeah. funny because I still own every single one of those games. And those are the ones that I'll immediately go back to just because of that nostalgia. I know. I, I don't, <laughs> because you like, could. <laughs> I have my my Game Boy Color, all those games right downstairs. Yeah. I could easily just pop them in. But for some reason, just having them on the Switch and then pulling them up for the TV, that's what mm. I'm super stoked Okay, to Okay, so you see, for me, every time I think of these games, and even the SNES ones that I've played, a, a lot of them on Switch, um, is just like, oh, I'm just going to sit on the couch and play them. Like, sure. I don't think about putting them on the TV, but you're right. Now you could see them and they will actually look proper or at least as as crisp as they can right now like obviously they can only do so much but like i think that's great i think that's a good point maybe maybe i'll do that with the original game boy ones because i just want to see what that screen looks like on the big screen yeah yeah (laughs) yeah Yeah. um and then what about the the game boy advanced uh lineup i know that Uh, super circuit's a really good game yeah i I really like super circuit yeah that's a really good um uh mario kart game and um i've never played minish caps so i'm tempted i'm tempted to get the online like the expansion pass just so i could play that at some point yeah. um but th- those are the, those are the two that stand out to me i would say yeah i i think that currently the the game boy advance lineup is a little bit weaker as long if, you know as far as i'm concerned and yeah um what i'm nostalgic for although minish cap is one of the only uh zelda games i partially played through i never beat it so if I do start to to go down this rabbit hole, I think that's the only game that I'll actually spend a lot of time with. Super right. Circuit, I played to death, um, yeah. so I don't really have an inkling to go back to that one. But Minish Cap, I might try and do like a full playthrough of because yeah, and they I did really they did it. tease ahead. Um, <clears throat> I think to the Game Boy slash Game Boy Color games that they're going to have Zelda Oracle of Ages and Seasons Dude, uh, on that. Those I, games oh are really God. good. I I've they're played so good. yeah, I've played um, Seasons. Or no, sorry, I played Ages, not Seasons. Um, And I know they sort of like tie in together a little bit, which is kind of cool. So that could be cool for other people to experience. Like for myself, you know, I'll I'll, I'll play one of them on here, which I can't remember which one it was. Pretty sure it's Ages that I played. Sure. Um, You know, because one of them is more blue. The other one's a little bit more red. red, That's sort of like how they differentiated them. Um, So that's kind of cool that that those are, uh, are coming on too. So yeah, no, it's... 
either way, they have Game Boy and Game Boy Advance on here. And that's something that I think we've talked about within the last, since we've started the podcast a couple of times, being sure. like, all right, how hard could this possibly be? Um, <laughs> and I think they were just stringing us along and they knew they knew it, man. They knew yeah. they were going to get us. Um, so yeah, it, it's it's great. And, and as, as just like with the other ones with SNES and NES and 64, like as the library builds, I think I'll be a little bit more interested to potentially right. put down a couple bucks extra a month. I currently don't have Switch Online. I canceled it for the year, but it's very easy to pick up and do because it's very cheap. So uh, I'm not too worried about doing that again just to play a couple of these games. If I don't have it for Game Boy and I'm really interested, then I'll get it. But yeah. I still have, all, like you said, I also still have most of the games that I have nostalgia for. I'm just more interested in the games I haven't played before. So we'll see what ends up coming coming out. Which brings us to Metroid Prime. Yes, because I have not played any of the Metroid Prime games, and this is very tempting for me to finally play these because as we talked about with Goldeneye, this has updated controls uh, and dual stick controls and everything, which alone is cool. And it's a full remaster, or at least as close to a full remaster as you can get. So right. it looks really damn sharp, at least in this trailer. And it's available right now. <laughs> <laughs> which is a common thing uh, that Nintendo just pulled on us, which is really yeah. cool. Um, yeah, like you, I I don't have too much exposure to Metroid Prime, the original. I played it a little bit at a friend's place. That was about it. I remember, you know, liking it well enough. And then I kind of went and played Metroid Prime 2 and 3 since then, um, which I also really enjoyed. But yeah, I don't have that connection to the original, so... It makes me want to go and play this game and kind of get a full experience, especially, you know, as everyone's patiently waiting for Prime 4. <laughs> that Yeah. I guess we have the time to. to I, I guess this, this is what they're, they're remastering yeah. the trilogy before they, they drop uh, four, but <laughs> maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's at least a, it's a remaster and it's, it's, you know, they've done some work here to sort of spruce yeah. it up. And it, so I appreciate that. Um, you know, it takes some work to, to do that, to bring it of from course. something that's 20 years old to this. So that's, that's really great. Um, I, I just, sort of discovered before we hit record but it's only $50 it's not quite a full price so like in a way that's a little bit more tempting a little bit easier to pull the trigger on I could easily yeah. right now as this thing is sitting beside me hit proceed to to purchase and I, I think <laughs> I'd be fine with that I I'm gonna I'm gonna think about it but it's it's also like I I haven't played enough Metroid games and these are ones that I've always been really interested in but again I never had a GameCube and I didn't know anyone that had these games so it sure. wasn't really accessible to me uh growing up so this is one of the Metroid titles that and a couple extra bucks into Nintendo that I'm willing to sink just for that reason. So yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm really tempted to play this. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, uh, it's, it's great there. So yeah. Yeah. Um, and then uh, I think, I think, I think we, we, I think we end it there. I think there was nothing else that they talked about. I think that was it. I think it was just, no, Metroid of course Prime not. Drop. No, <laughs> no. Not, um, uh, and then uh, so, uh, there was nothing. There was nothing that anyone's looking forward to later this year. Um, yeah. Mario Kart Eight. There's some tracks. Okay, cool. Next set yep. of tracks and and Birdo and okay, that's cool. Um, you know, Mario Kart Eight's still a game that is selling like gangbusters somehow. Um, it's yeah. been out for 12 years. But Tears of the Kingdom, the latest Legend of Zelda. We got a trailer, um, some sort of landscape shots and really like sort of epic scope and everything a little mm -hmm. bit of a voiceover from zelda and um presumably i guess at the end it seems like you can play as zelda at some point um because Maybe. as they fall through the sky and he's reaching for her he she's reaching for him a la amazing spider-man she's like give me your power and then yeah. we got the date confirmed as may 12th so uh may 12th of this year that will be out on Switch, and the next Zelda adventure will be upon us. Uh, Steve, what were your thoughts? I I thought it was great. Um, I was sitting there, kind of reflecting, like, "Holy cow! It's all it's it's been six whole years since Breath of the Wild." Like, I I got chills. Like there there was a moment in the trailer where you know Link does the the jump, and you see like the full spread of, like of, of Hyrule and everything. I was like, "Oh my god! I can't wait to go back into this world to." you see familiar enemies and kind of landscapes and stuff like that. I'm like, Oh, this is going to be such a great uh, little adventure. I uh, like, I just, I can't wait to jump in see what's new. What's uh, what's the same. What's what's changed. Yeah. What's of, um, 
uh, happened since, you know, Breath of the Wild and kind of just get into the story because I don't know about you. Uh, I'm a huge fan of like the the very convoluted and, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, arbitrary lore that the Legend of Zelda series has. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're I fun. love that shit. I like it. Um, yeah. But this one specifically, I think, has some of like the best fan theories, especially um, given this specific trailer where you see link's arm and the damage that's done to his arm right right people i i highly recommend i know you know tinfoil hat time and everything go out and <laughs> look at like fan theories about what that shit is all about because if it's true and this is the stuff that they're kind of like trying to weave into this story i think it has the potential to kind of clean up the convoluted timelines and oh stuff like that. interesting it, it has okay. a lot like there's a lot of compelling information there just the fact that because it, in the first trailer you kind of got got a glimpse of like you know a damaged hand and everything they're like is that links is that again like we don't really know like what's yeah going it wasn't on. that clear yeah but the fact that they're explicitly showing like oh it's scarred it's burned and then he has like this device over his arm that's giving him power and everything it's like okay and you kind of saw it a little bit when they showed the amiibo too so that like too like they're perfect. making a good point of like this yeah. is link in this moment in time yeah. so yeah i highly recommend people go out and like check out like fan theories about what that could all mean because i think it's really compelling stuff so for someone like me that's that loves that kind of side to the the, the franchise awesome stuff i i think there's yeah. really great stuff here and yeah i'm just really interested to see like how this differs from breath of the wild and what they kind of incorporate to to make it new and shiny i i love it yeah yeah how about i mean I, I really i really like breath of the wild i think it's it's excellent um yeah. I, this trailer didn't do much for me though like i was like okay it sure it's it, to me it you know i'm sure it's a little bit flashier i'm sure it's gonna do new stuff i'm sure it's going to be a different game but it really honestly felt like they were just showing me footage from breath of the wild that's what it looked like to me because yeah. the like you said the enemies are, are familiar i don't want to see familiar enemies i want to see sure. something new and there's going to be new stuff i know of you course. know for sure and it's it's you know they're just gonna like throw everything on the table all at once i get that yeah. there may or may not be another trailer it doesn't matter this thing's gonna sell like crazy and it's gonna do well they could tell you absolutely nothing and be silent until May 12th, it doesn't matter. And yeah. I'm probably going to be in line, quote unquote, on, in line, online, purchasing this game. But I wasn't like, oh my God, it's Tears of the Kingdom. Woo, sure. fuck yeah. Like I just, I didn't get that from this trailer. And I think I was more looking for, and my expectations are probably looming over a little bit too much, but like, how are they going to do the dungeon things? Or how are they, what are they doing with the weapons? What are they, like, it's those things, those those fundamental like gameplay choices yeah. and changes that they made that didn't ruin the game for me. I still enjoyed breath of the wild for all its ups and downs. It, it, it was fine. I, I enjoyed it the whole way through, but I want to know if they've done anything or changed because if they haven't changed that or changed enough, then I just feel like I'm playing the same game with a slightly different story. And to me, I'll probably still enjoy it, but to me, it's also, it's not to the level that I'm expecting. And that's just me probably having un unfair expectations or unrealistic ones. But that's what I want out of this, because it, like you said, it's been six, almost seven years. And now we're not sharing a generation or a platform yeah. to, to create this game. This is starting just on Switch. It, it's not on Wii U as well. What are they doing to make this more special than Breath of the Wild, which to me is already a special game. So right. what is that? I didn't get that from this trailer, which is why when I said before we kind of dove in, stuff in here excites me, but this didn't excite me enough, even sure. though I'm also contradicting myself saying I'm still going to buy and play this game. <laughs> so Yeah, I, 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 I think that's totally fair. I think that that is a kind of like a time and place where, you know, in April they do a Tears of the Kingdom direct. They're like, here's, yeah, you know, exactly what we're doing about weapon degradation, dungeon, stuff like that. I hope yeah. that they do like a 15, 20 minute kind of deep dive on this game because I, yeah, think, I think that's that's probably what I'm like wanting, whether yeah. today was supposed to be the, the time that they do it. Probably not. So that's kind of on me, I guess, in a way. But sure. um, but yeah, no, I think you're right. That's probably what it is. Yeah. A month before. Uh, six weeks before that's probably what we'll see and even if it's only five minutes and it's a brief trailer and it's just you know one of, one of the nintendo presenters going up there and have it on a on a whiteboard i don't care right, you don't have to yeah. show it to me just just tell me what it is and that's all exactly. i need to know like i don't yeah. i don't need to see an example of it i just want to know what's up and then i will explore myself i will discover it myself which is 
what I did with Breath of the Wild. Even though I played it like a year and a half after it came out, I was like, I'm I'm going to explore everything that's going on in here <laughs> and I'm just going to figure it out. And that's it. I knew very little going in and uh, and I want to kind of do the same with that because I think it's that kind of game. It's supposed to be a little bit of a sandbox while also being yep. familiar. And that's probably what they'll keep. I just, I, I'm excited, but I'm, I'm, meh from the trailer itself that's all (laughs) i I think that's totally fair yeah Yeah. and hopefully it whatever whatever the zelda potential zelda playable character is changes what you can do in the world so i think that could be very interesting um and that probably at the moment if that's where they're going with it is which it seems like that's where they're going with it based on like one comment (laughs) (laughs) give me your power (laughs) or whatever it was um yeah that's enough. I mean, that's cool. That's a big change. And that's something we haven't seen before. So that that's cool. Um, yeah. But yeah, Tears of the Kingdom, man. That's uh, it's, Switch is going to sell another 200 million units oh just my because. God. <laughs> Wild. Yeah, I hope my I hope my switch survives uh, the rest of this year because I had a little <laughs> bit of a scare about a month ago. That's right. And uh, and it's working again and I'm I'm good to go. I, I just hard reset and all this kind of and now it works. It just needs to hang on until about June 12th. When I'm about to probably finish this, finish playing yeah, this game, yeah, yeah. Um, and then I'm good, and then that's, that's it. it. I just need it to, to begin the summer, it. yeah. And then I can, you know, I don't want to, but if I have to, then I will, and that's it. So just got to get to this game. Um, all right, Steve, uh, we've covered enough and talked everybody's ear off for long enough. Uh, we have Nintendo Direct stuff. We have all of that. You can find at consolecreatures.com. Like we said, Bobby's doing the hard work right now. We're just sitting here yapping. Um, so check out consolecreatures.com for all the details. We've definitely glossed over a lot of it for the Nintendo Direct. And um, Season, A Letter to the Future, highly recommended. GoldenEye 007, highly recommended, especially if you have an Xbox and if, especially if you have Game Pass. And uh, chore games like Heart Space Shipbreaker, available on multiple platforms, including Game Pass. Quick recap, thought I'd try something new. Let's do that. I love that. And uh, yeah. until next time, Steve, where can everybody find you um, if Twitter is working or Elon isn't coming after you? Yeah, you know, if, if Elon, you know what, even if Elon is trying to get after me and, and silence me, you can find me across the internet at Svigvari. Amazing. There it is. Uh, I'm at Dave Petro, uh, pretty much, I think, just on Twitter, maybe Instagram. I don't know. I don't use Instagram long uh, enough. So uh, there's that. And then, of course, console creatures you can find across the board on social media as well. So until next time, everybody, have a great week. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.